Good morning. We've come to the um, precious time in our, our worship uh, where we um, come to focus on, on the communion, the Lord's Supper. This is the time in which the Lord has asked us um, from the time when he was still on this earth to remember him with the bread and the fruit of the vine. And I would love to just share with you just um, hopefully um, just a thought to to pull our thoughts to uh, um, remembering him. So, I, and when I came, when I thought about um, what we would um, consider this morning, um, I thought about a wonderful family that the Lord was very close to in his walk. He was close to many people. Um, during his ministry. But the scriptures give us a good account of three people um, that he spent a lot of intimate time with. Uh, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. These people were focal, especially on his journey back to Jerusalem for Passover and then the crucifixion, the burial, and the resurrection. The scriptures tell us in, in Luke chapter 10 that Jesus and his disciples had come to a village um, to the home of Martha, the sister of Mary and Lazarus. Chapter 10, verse 38. Luke chapter 10, verse 38, starting with verse 38. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened up her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things. But only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. This scripture has really kind of um, stuck in my mind many times as I, I've read over it. I think it's a, it's a wonderful perspective as we view Jesus um, through the eyes of these three people. But I want to focus on one person in this, in this scene, and that would be Mary. The dynamics are very interesting between these three people. But Jesus brings our attention to one, and that is Mary. He sa she is reclined at Jesus' feet. She is focused on him. It's, it's an interesting scenario because all of us have been in households where there's work to be done. Amen. Correct? Uh, there's cleaning. There's people coming over to visit. Um, there's food to be prepared. Who's going to do the shopping? Um, assignments for everybody. You know, uh, my mother and my father were very, very military oriented when it came to our family um, assignments. And if you were out of step, you were in trouble. Um, and especially with my mother, um, there were things that needed to be done and she would stressed at times when things were not getting done. So I can appreciate Martha's perspective, especially when one Jesus is about to come to your house 
to be a guest. Um, in a church, this is a wonderful example. There are many things to be done. There are those who are the bean counters, the accountants. There are those who have other things, assignments to be done, the deacons and the elders. But let us focus on Mary and her very focused attention on Jesus. She does not take her eyes off of him. She is at his side. And I, I, I focus on this because during the Lord's Supper, there are many things on our minds. There are many things that surround us um, as we come to even to worship him. Uh, it's easy to be distracted. Jesus said there's only one thing that matters. And as we consider the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus, we turn to John 20. Jesus is on the cross. He has died. Preparations have been made for his burial by Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, who had saw Jesus at night. They laid him in the tomb. The night has come. He, is, he, is, he has been buried. The next day has come, and Mary and the disciples have been to the tomb to see it empty. The disciples leave, but Mary stays at the tomb. In this instance, John calls her Mary Magdalene. And in verse 10, then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to, to look into the tomb. She saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body, body had been, one at the head, one at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I do not know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, and she did not realize it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned forward and cried out in Aramaic, Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Interesting. She embraces, embraces him. Not appropriate, Jesus says, at this point. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I'm returning to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord, she told them, and he has said these things to her. So I'm very impressed with her really focused attention on him. She sees him and she takes a hold of him. And he says, I've not returned to the Father. I, you can't hold on to me right now. Uh, I, I think uh, that's awesome. I think if any of our relatives had returned from the dead and we saw them, of course we would perhaps want to hold on to them. But with Jesus, and as we consider the Lord's Supper, I think we want to hold on to this moment and uh, not to him, as Mary did. But Jesus wants us to leave here in our communion time together after it and to go into our lives and to do what he wants us to do for others. Um, so let us focus on him. Let us hold on to him, if you would, and then take what we have learn and move on.
Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for the, the bread that is before us, which represents your precious, the precious body of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior. Bless us now as we partake of it. Forgive us. In Jesus' name, amen. give thanks for the fruit of the vine. Blessed Lord, I thank you again for the wonderful day we have here to come and worship you and to partake of the supper that was prepared to remember Jesus. Please bless the fruit of the vine, which represents the precious blood that flowed from his veins to cleanse us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 